Games with Neuromas. I'm Joseph and I'm here today with Draco. And today it's time to once again talk about five games that we played and talk about our first impressions or well, some of these games we have played quite a bit. But it's, yeah, the, first, the sort of review style I do each month or almost each month where I talk about five new games. And I'm also going to mention a few things about how everything's going right now. It is a Sort of ex time of excitement right now. It's the time just before Essence Spiel. Now this year, obviously, it's digital, so I'll be doing Essence Spiel from my, you know, the comfort of my home. I don't need to travel and so on. But it's going to be interesting, and I am going to live stream a lot during those days. It's going to be five days of constant live streaming. There's a bunch of games ready over here. I am going to read up on rules. I'm going to get ready, and then I'm going to do that huge sort of effort or just, you know at least two games today, live streaming during those days. It's going to be fun. I hope you will join in and I watch and tag along as I do that. And Draco is going to help me out, obviously. So let's get started with the first game that we're going to talk about today. And it's called Ragusa. And yeah, let, let's check it out. Okay, so first game of today here we're going to talk about is Ragusa. Now, I just realized when, you know, normally I have myself in green screen at the top left corner when I talk about these games, but I can't do that here because I already am in the top, in the bottom left corner, I mean, in the actual Ragusa playthrough, the live stream I did um, a few weeks ago. So you can go check that out, of course, if you want to see how the game is played. But I'm going to talk a little bit about it, my first impressions, and you're going to have to stick with just hearing my voice on this one. So in this game, you're trying to build up the city of Ragusa, and you're building a wall, you're building your buildings out here or putting your houses out in the rural area to get resources then you use those resources to convert them into like you get grapes and then you convert them into wine and then you can sell that wine or you can you know trade it to get these contracts with ships coming in it's a very euro -y game but i really like the style of it i like the look of it the components are really good i really like how they sold the sort of keeping track of how many resources you have of a certain type you just have these cards and the boards and then you flip the cards around to indicate how much you're basically producing of that resource so overall this game is a really fun i i really enjoy playing playing it solo here now in the solo mode there's you sort of start off you play against two ai opponents two bots basically because you need to be at least three players and well you can play it as a two-player game as well but in the solo game you always play against two opponents and it's interesting because where the opponent will go it's not well, it's not sort of randomized. It's randomized at the beginning, but then you it's already set. So you can see these black houses are where one of the two opponents are going to build later on. I know where they're not going to build, which makes for an interesting strategy game where I can start plan and I can try to predict where they will go next. A very interesting solo mode in this one. I, I kind of different from a lot of other games how the solo mode works and I really like that it's also a since you have the Thomas I mean I like this in solo games when you have someone to beat basically it's not just about beating your own score you're actually fight, you know competing against opponents and as the game goes by you can see how how you're doing so really like it uh, go check out the video if you haven't it's a fun playthrough as well of Ragusa okay so now I'm back on actual camera here for Undaunted North Africa now for this one, there's, if you haven't seen Undaunted, maybe you see, heard about or seen Undaunted Normandy, which was the first game that came out, and I really enjoyed that one. I thought that was really, it's like, normally I'm not a big fan of war games, but that really did it for me since it's the deck building and how you, sort of when you hit your opponent, when you shoot at your opponent, when you, your opponent takes a casualty, it's actually a card from the deck that they're losing. So it's not just a deck building game, it's also a sort of deck uh, destruction game where you're trying to destroy your opponent's deck, which means they cannot operate their units out on the board. Really nice here is like modular board, uh, North Africa game. It brings, this one brings um, some vehicles, some, it, it's also streamlining the game a bit, so it's quicker, which I... I liked in a way, but at the same time, I kind of like the Normandy more because of that, because I like the whole, it's this more deck building, this more engine building up and then executing whatever you're planning for in Undaunted uh, Normandy. But I do like North Africa as well. And especially, you know, depending on the situation, uh, you can choose between these two. I like, I'm going to keep both of them in my collection. And uh, it's a two player game and it's a, 
back and forth, but it's interesting how the initiative switches between the players who go first, depending on which cards you spend in order to win initiative. You want to spend a good card to be able to go first, but then you're also spending that good card, so then you're not get, getting the use out of it. So there's a lot of interesting game mechanical you know, perspective in this, and that's why I like it, even though it is a war-themed game. And again, you know, you can go check out my playthrough here with Draco. Um, I really enjoyed the game. I really enjoyed how how the game builds up a... Like, you could play the same scenario more than once because there's always different strategies. And you can also, you know, go, you know, take turns or if you, you might want to play through... There's like a campaign. So you might want to play through the campaign uh, with being one side and then you can switch up sides because they play very differently and they have different... Uh, objectives in each scenario as well so uh, very asymmetrical in that regard and that's also a plus i would say on this one comparing it to normandy because in normandy uh, we have the same troops regardless of which side you were playing so that's interesting in north africa there's a lot of changes to how it's, it's a lot more asymmetrical and next up is a digital game this is a root digitally on steam and I haven't played Root before this, and in this video here, uh, which has gotten a lot of views, it's been really popular, which I'm you know, happy for to see. And uh, so, you know, a little bit of a derail, but I'm really happy to see that there's a lot of views and a lot of support on the channel for digital board games as well. Because, I mean, these days, that's mostly the way that I play uh, games. And I really like this Root implementation. It, it's so nicely made. This is an early access, but it works nicely. There's been a few bugs, but not much. And, and wow, how they, I said this before with other digital games, but I really love when you, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of playing board games on, on these platforms like, you know, Board Game Arena or Tabletopia, where it's just a, basically a picture of the board and then you move stuff around. Uh, that just feels lame to me. Uh, it's, like, it's like a board game, but it's still not a board game. So instead, I like when they do an actual Steam conversion where, you know, here we have these little animals jumping around, you know, waving their swords. That's, you know animations i like that stuff it's you know it's a real digital game even though the the gameplay is you know exactly the same as in the board game and and i also love how you can play against ai because it's you know it's fun to play against friends but it's nice to be able to just sit back and play a quick game because the ai is really quick they don't you know they don't there's no ai that has ap <laughs> i think they don't need to think things through which i do like and yeah so i can really recommend root it's uh, you know I was well, say like a half a year ago, I did a top 10 games on Steam, or like digital board games on Steam list or a video. Um, and, you know, if I had done that today, Root had absolutely been in that top 10, probably in the top three, actually. So, yeah, so good, so good. Um, if you haven't played Root before, this tutorial is really, really good at teaching you the game. Uh, this was a two hour stream where I went through the whole tutorial and I really learned the game. And, you know, then, of course, I've been playing a lot more and then I learned, you know, all the details and strategy and fine tunings. But it's also a very good game to learn or also a good way to learn a game, learn Root. And then now I feel like I could play the actual board game with friends because now I'm ready. I know how the game works because this is a game that you really need to know a lot about before you, you know, I think it's fun because you need to understand how all these different factions work because they're so asymmetrical. This is like the most asymmetrical game I ever played. Uh, so uh, it's really cool, and I also have Root uh, with the expansion here uh, in in on my shelf, uh, the actual board game. So I am going to play. I'm going to stream it, play it with Drac. We're going to do a cooperative game video against the um, Atoma, the mechanical cat. That's going to be fun. We're going to do that during the SN live stream week, where I'll be live streaming a lot. So Root is going to be one of those games there. So uh, you know, if you haven't seen that before, or you know, no matter what, just you know, join in and see when we play, and you know, cheer us on. Maybe you're good at Root. Maybe you can give us some tips in the live chat. That's gonna be fun. All right, so let's head to the next game for today. Okay, so next up is Project L. Project L is a game that I didn't really hear much about, but then I saw. I don't. I don't remember how, but I got in contact. I think I was contacted by the designer and asked me about if I wanted to make a, a video of it. And I, I'm, I have a lot to film right now, so I was hesitant at first. I think I said something like in my email, I said like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out, but I can't promise you a date for the video. But then when I got it, I tried it out and I really enjoyed it. So I made a video pretty much right away. And it's, a, you know, it's an easy game to get into. It's basically sort of Tetris, the board game in some ways. You're building 
Tetris shapes with these different Tetris pieces. And I think what really, you know, I'm really weak for, you know, if you want my attention, make cool components, <laughs> make nice looking components, because I really have a soft spot for that. So I really wanted, you know, to get into play this because those tiles there, you know, plastic tiles, those are really cool. Uh, just getting away from the cardboard, I do like that. And also the little puzzle boards are, are double layered or recessed, so you put the actual pieces in there and, you know, you can actually, you know, they stay in there. I just like that. It's a good feeling. But yeah, so Project L is a cool game. Now, the there's a few, there's two things I would like to, that I, I am a bit negative about with this game. Uh, first of all, if we take a look at the play boards, as you can see here, uh, they show some pieces that are not in the base game. Uh, they came with an expansion that was in the Kickstarter, so I don't have the expansion. And then it just felt weird that there was actually pieces on and in the rulebook as well. It's like, oh, so this is how these pieces work. And I don't have those pieces. I, I just thought that was a weird design decision to have that in the base game rulebook. If you don't have, I don't like that. Uh, it would have be, been better to have an extra little rule, you know, pamphlet with the actual expansion that would have made more sense i don't know why they did it like that but and the the other negative or not negative but sort of thing that makes me hesitant about keeping this game i probably will you know sell it sell it on the uh, second hand market because in the long run i don't really see me playing this like 10 times uh, this this is fun you know, once or twice but then you sort of done it uh, i don't see the there's, there's not much depth to this game, I think. I mean, maybe I'm not in the target group, really, because I do like a little bit more meat to my games. So maybe this would work better or, like, have a longer stay if you're, you're playing with, you know, family or kids or people that are not that used to board game. This is absolutely a gateway game in that sense. So, yeah, I mean, we're very well made and it's it is fun. It's engine building basically. You sort of build you make puzzles to get more puzzle pieces so you can make more puzzles and then finally the game ends and then whoever has the most score wins. So a fun game. I recommend you to check out the video and you'll see if it might be something for you. But just you know bear that in mind that there's not that much variation in a sense because you're sort of doing the same thing over and over and over. Uh, so if you like doing that thing, then you know that's this might be a game for you. All right, so last game of today that I'm going to talk about is Wingspan. Now, this is the digital version of Wingspan because, I, of course, I played Wingspan a lot uh, in, in the year that it's been out, or more than a year now, one and a half, I think. And I played, you know, the board game. I played with friends. I played solo. There's solo videos out on my channel. There's gameplay, you know, a two-player uh, run-through out there as well. You can go check out if you haven't. Uh, Wingspan is a really, really lovely game. Really enjoy it a lot. And... So when this was coming to the digital format, I was excited. And also, I did try a, I tried the beta uh, version of this, the early access. And I think it was in May or April or May this year. And, and then I was excited for, you know, I was waiting for that email with the codes uh, from the developer. So I could do, you know, when the actual release came, uh, so I could do another playthrough. I did a live stream here, uh, had a really fun time with it. I played it a few times after that as well, off cam. Because I really like Wingspan. I mean, especially in this format, when I can play against an AI, it's very quick. It just goes back and forth. There's also the solo mode, if you prefer that. And and I can just, you know, sit around and, and try to figure out the best way to build my engine with this birch. And it's really like, I mean, the music is good. The sound effects are really good. And, and the feeling of the game really fits the, like, you can, it fits the theme. And it, it really feels like Wingspan. And you can choose your backgrounds. And, yeah, it's so lovely. And, and you even have, like, a... a you know, every time you play your bird, you get a little information about the bird read, read up to, you know, voiceover. So, yeah, really well made. I mean, basically, if you like Wingspan, you need to get this <laughs> if you like playing on, on Steam as well. So such a good implementation of the board game. Really, really well made. And again, this would have been in my top 10 or it is in my top 10 uh, Steam games for sure. It's digital board games. So I don't know. I, I don't need. I don't think I need to say much more than that. I mean, just you know, go check out Wingspan if you like it. Check it out on Steam if you haven't played Wingspan. This is also a very good way to learn the game, to get into the game again. Uh, I really like this. I mean, maybe that's a positive thing in all the the tough times going on right now. That's a positive thing that that we're getting more and more of these really nice digital implementations of board games that we already love, right? 
we we have a chance to play them even if we can't see our gaming groups like usual so yeah a really good one and i'm going to end the video on that note and then i'll be back of course with a lot of more more videos coming up here next week and so on and we're getting close to the essen uh, week where i will be streaming a lot and that's going to be uh the 22nd to 25th of, of october uh, so it's it's very close and um, also I am working right now on finishing the finishing touches of my own game Draco's Adventure uh, Draco is excited for it of course so your own game is coming on Kickstarter uh, in just a little while here so that's gonna be awesome so stay tuned for that as well thank you so much for watching this first impressions vlog if you have any questions or you know concerns or uh, requests or whatever just tell me in the comment section and you know like the video uh, thank you for all the support for the channel and have a great evening or morning or whenever you're watching take care bye bye Be like Draco. Follow board games with Niramas on Facebook at BGW Niramas.